Welcome to another episode of the Optimist Futures podcast, Everything Futures, where we dive deep into the world of futures trading. Today, we're addressing a curious phenomenon that, while puzzling, is all too common. Why do many traders continue to stick to methods that repeatedly fail them? At a glance, it might seem counterintuitive. After all, in a realm where profit is the end game, why would anyone willingly cling to a losing strategy? But the answer lies deeper than just numbers and charts. It's entrenched in our very psyche. Cognitive biases, those subconscious shortcuts our minds take, paired with deep-seated emotional reactions and ingrained habits, often drive our decisions in the trading arena. These psychological intricacies not only shape our trading behavior, but also offer a captivating glimpse into our broader human nature. During this episode, we'll delve into these psychological biases and emotional drivers, giving you a brief overview of what's to come. By understanding and recognizing these biases, we stand a chance to sidestep their pitfalls, refining our trading strategies and decision-making processes. So, buckle up as we embark on this enlightening journey into the trader's mind exploring the hidden forces that sometimes lead us astray. Don't forget to check our site, optimusfutures.com, and check our platform, Optimus Flow. Let's get started. Confirmation bias and overconfidence, the trader's dual adversaries. In the vast, volatile expanse of the trading world, every trader, novice or seasoned, seeks a semblance of predictability, a method to the madness. They invest time, energy, and often a fair amount of their emotional well-being into crafting a trading strategy they believe will be their key to consistent profits. However, as many traders have come to realize, the market's capricious nature doesn't always play nicely with these meticulously devised strategies. Yet, what's truly perplexing isn't just that these strategies sometimes fail, but rather the obstinate loyalty traders show to these methods even in the face of recurrent failures. Why is it so challenging for traders to let go of a losing strategy? The answer lies in the interplay of two deeply ingrained psychological tendencies, confirmation bias and overconfidence. One, confirmation bias, remembering the hits and forgetting the misses. Once a trader has settled on a specific method, the mind's natural inclination towards confirmation bias begins to manifest. Simply put, confirmation bias is the tendency to seek, recall, and place undue emphasis on information that affirms our pre-existing beliefs, while conveniently disregarding or downplaying information that contradicts them. In the context of trading, this means that traders tend to vividly remember those golden moments when their strategy worked flawlessly netting them a handsome profit. These successes, no matter how sporadic, are celebrated and cemented in memory. On the other hand, the instances when the strategy faltered, leading to losses or missed opportunities, tend to fade into the background, dismissed as anomalies or attributed to external factors beyond the trader's control. This selective memory creates a skewed perception of the strategy's efficacy. Over time, a trader may come to believe that their method is far more successful than it objectively is. Charts, graphs, and past trades are all viewed through this distorted lens, with positive outcomes magnified and negatives minimized or rationalized away. Two, overconfidence. The illusory armor, coupled with confirmation bias, is its partner in crime, overconfidence. As traders begin to amass a mental stockpile of their strategy's successes, thanks to confirmation bias, an inflated sense of their trading prowess develops. They become increasingly convinced of their methods in vulnerability and their own skill in employing it. This overconfidence acts as a protective barrier, insulating them from the harsh reality of a method's repeated failures. It provides a false sense of security, leading traders to take bigger risks under the belief that they've cracked the code to the market's enigmatic movements. In essence, the combination of confirmation bias and overconfidence creates a feedback loop. The more a trader remembers their successes and downplays their failures, the more confident they become in their method. And the more confident they are, the more they are likely to seek and recall confirmatory evidence, further fueling their overconfidence. Breaking free from this loop requires immense self-awareness and a commitment to objective analysis. Traders must actively challenge their beliefs consistently revisiting and evaluating their strategies against raw, unfiltered data. Only by acknowledging and confronting these inherent biases 
can traders hope to navigate the market with a clear, unbiased perspective, increasing their chances of genuine, sustained success? Still, traders can look at their profit and loss and realize whether their method is working or not. Or can they? Misattribution and self-blame. The trap of flawed execution. The realm of trading is riddled with complexities where strategies, no matter how meticulously devised, can often fall short of expectations. Traders, when faced with a series of unsuccessful trades, are confronted with a glaringly negative P&L statement. Yet, it's a puzzling phenomenon to observe that instead of reevaluating their chosen method, many remain staunchly adhered to it, convinced that the fault lies not with the strategy, but with its execution. Misattribution, a discrepancy between strategy and application. The first layer of this behavior can be attributed to misattribution. Humans innately seek reasons and causes for every outcome, and traders are no exception. When faced with a negative result, separating the strategy from its application becomes convenient. This cognitive disconnect allows traders to believe that while their strategy is sound, the timing, a slight tweak in parameters or some external market anomaly led to the undesirable outcome. This mental gymnastics shields the core strategy from criticism, diverting the blame to circumstantial factors. For instance, a trader might think, the strategy signaled a buy and I acted on it, but maybe I acted too soon. Or perhaps I didn't let the trade run long enough. Such reflections might have validity in isolated instances. However, when they become a consistent post hoc rationalization for repeated failures, they serve as a smokescreen, obscuring the need for genuine introspection and strategy reassessment. Self blame, the burden of imperfect implementation. Coupled with misattribution is the heavy mantle of self blame. The trading world idolizes the tales of those who've achieved legendary successes through unique methods and unwavering discipline. Subconsciously, this creates an ideal that every failure is not a fault of the method, but a personal failing in discipline or application. Many traders, especially those deeply invested in their chosen methods, internalize losses as a reflection of their inadequacy. If only I had followed the rules more strictly, they lament. Or, maybe I'm not disciplined enough to execute this strategy correctly. This self-blame can be a double-edged sword. While it emphasizes the importance of discipline in trading, it also creates an emotional trap where the trader feels bound to a losing strategy, believing that they can turn their fortunes around with just a bit more rigor or another chance. Furthermore, the very nature of financial markets, with their myriad of variables, gives credence to this belief. Because no strategy can account for every market nuance, there's always a plausible excuse for a loss allowing the trader to live perpetually in the hope of a better outcome next time. The path forward, objective analysis over emotional attachment. The combination of misattribution and self-blame creates a powerful emotional barrier, preventing traders from discarding ineffective strategies. To overcome this, traders must cultivate an objective mindset. This entails regularly reviewing and assessing trading strategies based on outcomes, not intentions. By detaching emotionally from methods and viewing them as tools rather than extensions of one's self-worth, traders can navigate decisions with clarity, making necessary adjustments, or abandoning strategies when evidence consistently points to their ineffectiveness. In essence, success in trading requires the harmonious marriage of strategy and self-awareness, where methods are continually refined based on outcomes, and personal growth is prioritized over blind allegiance to a chosen approach. But how do you measure your method objectively? A step-by-step -step guide to objectively assessing your trading method. In the intricate dance of trading, where psychological biases often lead traders down paths of persistent adherence to failing strategies, one thing becomes clear. Success is not just about the right method, but also the right mindset. The journey to profitable trading requires a continuous self-awareness, reflection, and adjustment cycle. Let's now summarize our exploration and outline a step-by-step -step guide to assessing your trading method objectively. 1. Acknowledge the psychological pitfalls. Understand that human nature is predisposed to biases like confirmation bias, overconfidence, misattribution, and self-blame. Recognizing these tendencies is the first step to overcoming them. 2. Document every trade. Maintain a trading journal where you record the specifics of every trade. 
strategy used, market conditions, entry and exit points, and the outcome. Include your emotional state and thought process during the trade. This helps in identifying patterns where emotions might have clouded judgment. Three, regularly review your P&L statement. Analyze your profit and loss statement without emotional attachments. This document doesn't lie and is a clear indicator of whether your strategy is effective over the long term. Four, seek feedback. Engage with fellow traders or mentors. An external perspective can offer insights you might have missed and provide an unbiased evaluation of your method. Five, challenge your own beliefs. Test your strategy under different market conditions. If you find yourself rationalizing losses too often, it's a red flag. Ask yourself hard questions. Is the method yielding consistent results? Are losses due to external factors? Or is there a pattern indicating a deeper flaw in the strategy? Six, avoid emotional attachment to a method. Remember that no method is infallible. If data suggests it's not working, be ready to adapt or discard it. Consider strategies as tools in your trading toolbox. If one doesn't work, it might be time to try another or refine the one you have. Seven, set clear metrics for success and failure. Determine clear criteria for what constitutes a successful strategy and what doesn't. This might be a specific win rate percentage or a certain return on investment. Evaluate your method against these metrics regularly to ensure it's still serving your trading goals. Eight, continuous learning and adaptation. Stay updated with market trends, new trading techniques, and financial news. The trading world is dynamic, and what works today might not work tomorrow. Regularly invest in enhancing your trading skills and knowledge. Consider attending workshops, webinars, or reading books on both trading and behavioral finance. In conclusion, at its heart, trading is as much a journey of self-discovery as it is about financial growth. By adopting an objective, data-driven approach to assess strategies and staying vigilant against inherent psychological biases, traders can navigate the volatile waters of the financial markets with enhanced clarity and confidence. The key lies not in finding the perfect strategy, but in the continuous evaluation, learning, and adaptation process. Your method is only as good as your commitment to understanding and refining it. This brings us to another episode of the Optimist Futures podcast. Everything Futures. Please share or like this episode to spread to help other traders in their journey. Don't forget to check our site, OptimistFutures.com, and test our platform, Optimist Flow. This material should be viewed as a solicitation for entering into a derivatives transaction. Trading futures and options involves substantial risk of loss and is not suitable for all investors. Past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. The risk of loss in trading commodity interests can be substantial. You should therefore carefully consider whether such trading is suitable for you in light of your financial condition. The placement of contingent orders by you or broker or trading advisor, such as a stop loss or stop limit order, will not necessarily limit your losses to the intended amounts, since market conditions may make it impossible to execute such orders. The high degree of leverage that is often obtainable in commodity interest trading can work against you as well as for you. The use of leverage can lead to large losses as well as gains. Optimus Futures, LLC is not affiliated with nor does it endorse any trading system, methodologies, newsletter, or other similar service. We urge you to conduct your own due diligence.